Um, let's go to the snare. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Okay. Try with the EQ and whatever that whatever else we do to it. So you can you can it's pretty apparent what's what's going on. Yes? Do I hear a positive? Yes. Ah. Arigato. Hi. So let us now go to hi hat, please. I'm sorry, if there are any Japanese people in the audience, please do not feel insulted. I love Japan. <laughs> what? Oh, God, the guy just got me in the back or something. <laughs> Well, you can tell that's unequued. Let's just see what did I do to it. Okay. If you look at the EQ, you'll see that what I've done is what? Roll some bottom off, put some mids and top in, right? But the cool thing about it is that since I had recorded it on a J series console used the Neve mic pre's now I'm going back to SSL. I used in this demonstration, you'll see that there is API, there's Neve, and there's SSL. I used use them for a variety of reasons because they all have different tone colors. Okay, monsieur, carry on, please. What's next? Are we gonna do the stereo toms? Thank you. Okay, let's try and put the uh, EQ in there and whatever else we did to it. Aha, there's the API. Okay, go for it. Cool. But once again, you can see how immediate it is. It's really doing some nice stuff. What? He's going, what, what, what did he do there? You were going to ask a question. No, the gentleman behind you. No, I'm just saying it just really stacks there. It does, yeah. Well, you can see, oh, if you want to go back, would you mind just, just to see what, can you, can you guys all see that? Plus two at what? 10. And plus four at what? 1.5. And plus four at 200. Now, that may seem excessive, but really in a mixed down situation, it's not because there's other things that are going to happen. There's compression, too, on the actual stereo bus, which we have not got to as yet, but we will. And that all works together, OK? Let's go to the overhead left, center, right. By the way, um, how I like to do the, the overheads, it, three microphones. Now, if you're at Abbey Road, you go for the best. Three U47s, left, center, right. Into, th in, into three really cool pull techs, right? So now you've got two mics and two BQ, and then into the SSL with the Neve Pre's. Uh, but yeah, it sounds good, but we want to do some more stuff to it. Let's just see what it sounds like. It's interesting, isn't it, that with those three microphones, you pretty much have the whole kit, don't you? Yeah, Very interesting. So let's see what I do to the EQ. <laughs> Essentially, what I'm doing is just making the top end just a little bit more present. Yes, you would agree? <coughs> and I'm leaving that natural feel because when you start to add in all the other bits and pieces, i.e. the bass drum. By the way, I use the word bass drum. I don't use the word kick. I use bass drum because it's more polite. You don't kick the bass drum. You play the bloody thing. 
<laughs> Sorry. Just, just a, an English peculiarity. You have to forgive me. Even though I've lived here for like 40 years, I still feel like I'm half an English twit. Or maybe a whole English twit. I don't know. <laughs> um, so that's the overheads. And then, now we have two sets of rooms. Uh, there's a close miking of the room, meaning about six foot away from the drum kit, with a stereo microphone called a C24. Anybody know? Who knows what a C24 is? Hands up. I, yeah, but anybody know what a C24 is? Everybody use a C24. Yeah, I know. Anybody use a C24? One? One gentleman? Yes. <laughs> OK, C24, you'd have to sell your house, sell your firstborn, it's about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's about about fifteen grand. But what is it? It's a stereo C12 essentially. It's a microphone that's about yay big, and it's what? It's tube, right? Because I love tube microphones. Um, and this is in front of the kit, and it's split like this, looking at the drums, giving a nice tight image, cardioid. Yeah. What kind of cereal? Okay, I try with the EQ. So you can, once again, I'm not drastically changing, but I am brightening it up and I'm doing a little filtering. Uh, where am I? Actually, no, I'm, I'm hitting it up at uh, a little touch about, about 60. 60 cycles, about 1.5 dB, um, a little touch of 1.5, um, and then a little bit of 10K. And that's about all I'm going to do to that. Now, the next pair, if you're at EMI, you might as well go for the best, right? Pair of M50s. Anybody know what M50s are? Yeah, they're like gold. That's like, that's the best. Um, <coughs> Orchestral mic. I mean, a lot of classical recordings are done with M50s. Go ahead. Doesn't that sound like a bit like Barnum? It's got that poof. And that's, if you've got a nice sounding room and you've got a great pair of microphones, look what you can do. And that's without EQ. OK, let's try with EQ. Sound nice? You're getting the picture, all right? See how it's starting to build in layers. You can kind of mentally get the idea that, OK, let's see, the C24 was there. Maybe the, C, maybe the M50 is going to be here, and the snare's going to be there, and the basement's going to be there. We already got an idea of where the sound's going. Uh, you want to jump to the bass? Can we, can we do that? Cool. Now, the bass. Uh, <clears throat> Because I changed something in the structure of the song, which is the wonderful thing about Pro Tools, is that you can do that after the fact. Um, I wanted a pre-chorus going to a chorus, and we actually created that out of one part of the song. And that was one thing we did. And the other thing we did was the bass part in the verse I didn't like because I felt that he was playing too high up on the neck. But there was another part of the song where he played almost an identical part down the octave. And I thought, hmm, maybe if I just did a quick sandwich here, you know, bologna, <laughs> lettuce, tomato, mayo, well, I'm hungry or something. All right, let's just try now. The bass uh, will be the first, well, it's split up into two things. We got, you want to do the DI first? Sure. Let's do the DI. Okay. 
Now put the EQ in and see what we got. Let's go to the, the uh, base mic, please. Bypass? A bypass first, yes, please. Play the DI and the and the uh, bass DI on that together, please. Cool. Now let's find what this guy is doing, which is the additional one, right? Uh, DSM1 and this. You want to do them both together or just separately? Can we do them separately? Sure. Let's do it separately. <laughs> That's what it was missing. Right? Now now the uh, one next to it. Oh, did you did the uh, EQ in? Oh, put the EQ in, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, and uh, bass mic please on the on that that part with with or without EQ. the amp, obviously. Put the EQ in. Yeah. Okay. Now, play that old bloody mess now. See what we got. Ah, horrible. <laughs> right. All four. Yep. So uh, there'll be my worst imitation of Kiss, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a couple of Kiss fans in here. So there's one over there. It's got Kiss written all over his face. <laughs> okay, what's next? What do we got? So that's that part. Uh, you want to do guitar? Let's do what? Oh, we forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Um, where is that little that little guy up? Oh, there he is. Oh. Play it again and watch this. Check this out. Bypass. Uh, bypass first, please. All right, now put it in. That's an awesome compressor because, I mean, you, you know, you think with digital you can't Drive it hard. We're driving the crap out of that thing. I mean, it's it's really hitting hard, and you can make it sound very cool, as you can tell. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility with. I beg your pardon. Sorry, earphones. You need earphones. You want plugs? I got a pair. <laughs> but anyway, the the idea there's that there's a lot of flexibility in the way you can adjust the attack and the release and the, how much compression you can put in there, and it's it's pretty cool. So that's. Compressing the, the, the whole signal. OK, let's go to, you want to go to the acoustic guitar? OK. Acoustic guitar is broken up into um, four distinct channels. There's a stereo um, miking technique that I use on the guitar itself, right up here by the neck, and then right by the bottom. And then in addition to which, there's a process that is recorded at the same time. I can't tell you how I did it because I have to kill myself and then everybody else in the room, but you'll get the idea. Okay, uh, the plain acoustic guitar, please. Okay, let's put the EQ in. Yes, but, and, but we didn't put the EQ because we thought it was bright enough, right? Yeah, okay, yes, SSL compression on that. Thank you, Mr. Scott Simon. Oh, hello. Splendid looking little thing, isn't it? Okay, 
OK, so you get the idea what that's doing, right? Yes? No? All right, am I putting you all to sleep? You let me know. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, let's play the opposite number of it, this guy here, the delayed effect, please. <laughs> Both together, there's an idea that there's a concept here, hopefully, that will work. And the idea here is, of course, to make it sound bigger than the original guitar. And I think we've achieved that. You can get the sense it almost sounds like two guitars, but it isn't. It's really from one source. And it also depends on where you place that in the stereo image. I have it panned hard left and sort of half right about there in the stereo image because it's going to be the opposite to the next thing. Let's go to our um, guitar. You, uh, these two guys, one or three, this guy, these two guys. First, first, first electric guitar. <laughs> Kind of see where that's at. It's a little dull. It needs a little help. Let's see what we got. Uh, are, there two, are there two of those guys, or just one? Yeah. Okay. Would you please? Thank you, Mr. Simon. Splendid work over there. Ah, look, two. Come. Yep. Well, you can see right away what we're doing. We, we're messing with the mid-range here. Um, we've got a little bit of 7K, a touch of uh, about 3.5, uh, a little bit of about just under 2, about 1.8. And I think I did the same thing on both, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's different. The top one is different. I can't really see it from here, but it looks it's underneath 3K. But essentially, I've gone for the mid-range there just to try and brighten up a little bit. All right, let's go for the other guitar. Let's put the EQ in. Could you play that and the other guitar and the acoustic guitar all at the same time, please? With the EQ, with all the EQ in. But you can see how it's building up now in layers. Why? The acoustic guitar was in there for a little bit of brightness. It's the complement of the other guitar. And then you've got the heavy, crunchy guitar. We're using a little amplifier called a, it's made by Orange. You know the Orange amps? There's a new thing called the Tiny Terra. It's literally, I'm not kidding, it's about this big by this little tube amp, 5 watts and 7 watts. And it's driving, that thing is driving a Marshall 4 by 12 It's amazing. Just, just, they're just coming out with it now. So. Oh, that could be a waves thing, couldn't it? I mean, uh, um, a waves plug in, and it also could also be a, a Sweetwater thing, too, couldn't it? Hmm. Hadn't thought about that. OK, what do we got? All four, uh, the, the, two, the two sets of acoustics and the two sets of guitars. OK. It's a little hard, because I'm not out there and I can't do the mix, <laughs> so I can't tell you what the blend's going to be like. But it's, it's, we'll, we're going to play the final mix in the end, and we'll hear that. <laughs> 